Hi all, right, back with more Skies Above Britain. Uh, this is chapter one, patrol three, part three. It's quite hard to keep track of these actually. I think that's right. Chapter one, patrol three, part three. Right. Um, uh, okay, so where are we? Where are we? Uh, we're waiting to resolve this this little flack of the reveal step. We've got the raid marker and yeah. Yeah, the raid marker's just appeared, hasn't it? That's the first of it coming aboard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because we've resolved that one and we're on this one, right. Uh, okay, just a couple of points. Had a few comments, quite important ones. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have, I don't, again, I usually get my tablet and set them up and look and whatever. I'm just, I'm not settled with all, all the time in the world right now for it. So, first of all, <laughs> look what Tim, Tim's pointed out to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I dare say Maury is, knew this as well. Um, I spoke about it before. Uh, he, he made the comment when I talked about the escort exit on... Now, uh, where is... Where does that come up in a different kind of... Is it when you make contact? No, is it that vector? I think it's a vector card. Yeah, it's this vector card. Here. So it's, it's if you've not made contact, I think. When you're moving the squadron, you move it to a different altitude. Yeah. Do a move action or improve your squadron situation. And in this step here, it's ex es escort exit. Make an escort exit check. So, and I, I, I was thinking, right, well, well, how can that make an escort exit? It's, it's in here at the time. No. No, actually. No, this isn't even on the map, is it? This isn't even on the map. But I'm saying that, and that needs to be in the red... It needs to be in the... The, the red marker needs to be on the map, does it not? Anyway, anyway, whatever whatever the reason that I was looking for, there's there's an ex escort exit mark number down there. I mean, I have to say, I mean, okay, it's there, it's over, it's it's underneath the inbound, inbound vector marker, but why is it way down the bottom here? Why is it not up in these boxes here where the where the red marker's moving through? But then again, these are covering it. The outbound vector markers cover it. They are so. Whether I'm trying to make excuses for not noticing it before, but um, they are there. <laughs> the numbers are there. And what what is even more odd though is this is the bit that shows you that this is relevant to 109s, the number on the left, and this is number. Uh, um, sorry, uh, number twelve. And that means if you get that, the escort's reduced. Well, it either gets reduced or it gets removed if it's light, doesn't it? So there are numbers underneath. Um, now we've not we've not been down this track very much. I think the furthest we've got is just to this box here. But there must have been a point where I was in this box and that eleven may have mattered. And um, fortunately for us, it's something that benefits us rather than the the AI. So. Um, no, it was a die roll at 11 to remove, uh, it would be the 109 escort, uh, escort markers. Uh. Um, anyway, thanks for bringing it up, Tim. I, I clearly did not notice it. Um, I also noticed down there, I went, right, what is this? And then I'm realising what this means is if you get the measurement, measure, measure smith event, it equals a straggler while you're in the deep zone. Well, not only while you're in the deep zone, it's either if you're in the deep zone or the raid marker's in the deep zone. And that's what that's uh, referring to there. I mean, they are, they are under, under it, all the inbound vector markers, but I should have, I should have seen them, but however. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for bringing it up. Uh, he also commented on how he's dealing with the... I don't know if it's something I've said or if he's had some hindsight, because I know I make a mistake with these, how to mark these... And I make an adjustment to it in part, the beginning of part three. Uh, but this was, he, he commented on this in part two. And I kind of thought I was putting them in the right place come part two. It was part three, I started making a mess of things. Because you can see that it's got, right at the very top one, it's got chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. 
and then for chapter one, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six wee circles. Clearly, the, and there's six patrols. So this is for patrol one, patrol two, patrol three, etc. And for three and four, they've actually got eight patrols each. That's why there's two more. Um, so I don't know if I'd been speaking about something wrong or whatever, but um, it, it was just saying, uh, suggesting that um, the way to do it is put it. But I thought I was doing that right when he made the comment. But I ended up, do I do sort of wonder with that a little bit. And I think I've got it back on track now anyway. Um, yeah, another, another big one from Stu this time. As, um, oh, damn it. Although the reply is slightly... Uh, he's, he's named the wrong manoeuvre when he's talked about it, but he has named the correct page for where the rule is. He says that, um, he calls it the evade manoeuvre, but he's, he's clearly getting muddled up between the two. It's, it's clearly the slip manoeuvre. And uh, I never I never really thought about that. So if we've got, and in fact, we could have done this, couldn't we? In fact, we could have done this on both occasions here. Damn. That's, that's annoying. That's another blunder by myself. Using the slip manoeuvre, it has to be used on a squadron, right? And the good, but the good thing about all that is that, the, it, right, let's read that. It says, this manoeuvre is available only at a section, not to an individual area of fighter, exception slick A skill, right? It is an attempt to slip one fighter behind pursuing German fighters. So, I've not really been considering the full effect of this though, because we read on. There is no effect unless a slip icon appears as one of the combat results. Okay, so you've got to get the slip. If you don't get the slip, then that's that. But if the icon appears, all other results are ignored, right? So you ignore all the other results, and I'm thinking, well, then that means you're you're going into round two of the dogfight and you're all lost contact. No, you're not, because the other option here is all our results are ignored and one area fighter in the section is immediately placed so that it's tailing the wolf off a fighter marker which still doesn't sound like it, it's um, quite fixing everything and by the way that wasn't a me it looks like you've got to do that and um, so there's the slip before let's just say you've got two in your section then you get the slip icon you ignore everything on the card all the icons However, you slip this guy behind the area of fighters. Uh, the, the Luftwaffe fighter. This guy. And then I'm thinking, but he's still, he's still engaged with that. So it still means that everything's going to be lost contact. Well, no, that's not the case. It says, carries on. Um, then the German pilots break off their pursuit as they attempt to evade the area of fighter tailing them. They let you fighters go. That is, the newly tailing area fighter becomes independent, engaged with the Luftwaffe fighter marker in front of it, while the rest of the section is no longer engaged. So, I mean, you know, if we get... Uh, hang on. Right, sorry, I got dragged away there. Um, right, so... Yeah, I'm talking about the slip, wasn't I? So, the situation being like this, we, um... They're on the one bit here, aren't they? Are they turn, turn? No, slip one. Yeah. Okay, so we do this. We've got a section. We're tailed by a swarm, so we, shall we say. We do the slip. We draw the... Well, actually, hang on. <laughs> let's, let's do it right if we're going to do it right. So the card that I've got, I just drew it there. Discard pile on it. And it's 110, so it's going to affect. So we draw... We draw this card. We've got one tens against the section. The slip icon's there, which means that we ignore all the results. Just ignore all that. Nothing happens. Well, nothing happens regarding that card. But then we carry out the rest of the slip manoeuvre, which means one of these. Now, do we choose? Um, <clears throat> there's no effect. If the icon appears... All other results are ignored, and one area of the section is immediately placed. Yeah, yeah. It seems it seems to be that you can that you can pick. So what we do is then we slip one of these behind us, like that, um, and then because we are behind that, it wants to maneuver to get away from us. So it basically disengages from them, 
and basically it just comes down here itself um, being tailed now being tailed by this fighter so this fighter becomes lost contact yes but this other two fighters of the section stay in the section and are not lost contact so yeah that's that's really big that actually um, and I didn't realise that uh, that I think I knew that the fighter came round, but I just I didn't think it disengaged from the other two that were there. I think that's what it was. So uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that one up, Stu, because uh, I probably wouldn't have uh, realised that unless somebody had told me. So good stuff. Uh, there was another couple of things. And Stu mentioned about the sun. The sun being there is not good because you don't get the chance for the sun. Uh, you know, you, you get the die roll. If you're in the sun, you get to roll the two dice together, don't you? Also, he says, um, you don't get to see where the escorts are. Um, which... Actually, we're in that position right now. Where are the escorts? Well, actually, hold on. Have we not... No, we've made contact. Yeah, I don't think we've been able to put them put them in because we've been in the haze haven't we oh yeah i know no i remember i rolled for the escorts didn't i and i rolled wrong because of, it has to be clear and um, although the sun is here um so that's am i making a mistake there then because i thought that's why i rolled i rolled for the escorts because i thought oh the sun's out but it doesn't it says you roll for the escorts only if it's clear so it's not really you could have the haze in the sun. Where does it, um, let's see, oh, escorts, hang on. No, I've not, I've not dealt with all this yet, have I? And now I've took this away, was I on the coast there? Oh man. Was I not in the middle? No, I think I was on the coast. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not at that stage yet, am I? We've just revealed this uh, raid marker. We're dealing with the last um, inbound vector marker. And then after that, we're going to be able to... Yeah, no, it's at the end of this. We're going to be able to tally ho and contact. And then once we've done that, we can put the escort stations out. Why, where was the bit that told me about the escort stations getting placed though? We tried to place them already and I got that wrong. And where was that? Oh, I'm getting myself in a muddle now. Hang on. Right, okay, I, I found it. I found it where we're at. So the very first icon was the raid icon, wasn't it? And that's, we, re we would have revealed this card, use this card, raid marker. If the raid marker's not yet in play, place it in the vector marker space in the raid track. We did that. A visible is clear row of data place escort station markers and escorts and escort stations on the interception map by the results indicating the situation manual. I went into the manual, rolled dice, we got a bad result, I placed them and then I thought, wait a minute, the visibility is clear it says. So hang on, that's page fifty-three. Let me just double check in the rules here. Um I'm selling a right mess here. Fifty-three uh, yeah, then if visibility is clear, roll a die. Yeah, visibility was, is not clear. And that's why we took the, the two of them back off. And I'm going to re-roll that. I mean, I know I know it was a bad result for me, but I'm kind of hoping we get, it was a two we rolled, wasn't it? I'm kind of hoping I roll a two again and it keeps it fair. But I don't think we should have the knowledge yet because we're about to make contact and we're going to have to decide where we want to go. And if I've got the knowledge of where the escort stations are, then it's it's bad. So yeah, so I think your comment, um, Stu, about the sun being out, for, it's not necessarily the sun, because I've got the sun, it's about it being clear, isn't it? I mean, I suppose if it's clear, you've got the sun anyway, but... Um, so that one is slightly different, I think. I think it's not the sun that's making that making that happen, that's the clear visibility. If I'm not mistaken, anyway. Right, so, and then, if visibility is not clear, you place the raid marker and go back to card one. 
you don't roll for the escort stations, right? And that's what we've done. Um, yeah, and the next bit's that. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to move on now. Um, I think there, there might have been... Yeah. <sighs> I don't know if I should be here or here. I get the feeling it's, it is in the coast, but... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to double check this. Um... Because I know I moved it out of the way to look at these. I think I, I think I moved it down like that to look at this one, didn't I? I'm pretty sure it is in the coast, because I'm pretty sure I knew I was in the same zone, and that's better than being in an adjacent zone, isn't it? Let me just double check. Yeah, okay, that is in the right spot. Um, quick, uh, got a few more comments in there. Uh, basically, yeah, one of the ones that I remember, Stu had said that... That basically I resolved this raid. I didn't turn any other. Yeah, this is sorry, sorry. This was uh, uh, patrol two. You know, had when I had the, I still had the token underneath. I still had one to go underneath, and I was like saying, should I have resolved that first because it, this was the other way about like that, and um, it it tells you to delay the raid until the the end of the sort of the end of. What was that the, the patrol complete phase, the raid vector section? It, Sorry, the raid vector step and the patrol complete phase <laughs> or sequ sequence or whatever whatever the things are um, and he says yeah no you just leave that you do that and you think so it's the way I go right so I asked him he says he's not got that far yet but Tim chimed down and says that I'm overthinking things here uh, he, he, he time stamps it right at the time stamp where I made the comment in the header about it in part 2 uh, in patrol 2 uh, saying I'm overthinking, he says, but I'm getting it right. So I'm glad I'm getting it right. Um, maybe I'm overthinking. I've got, I've got, I've got a habit of doing these things. I do feel that that bit wasn't terribly clear though. Um, it might just be me though. It might just be me. Sounds like um, yeah, I get the impression he felt like it wasn't really an issue. But maybe I don't know. Some folks see these things differently, don't they? But if I'm getting it right, that's good. If I understand that, if somebody says to me, right, because this could be in the top token of the four that were there, and we would uh, then had three underneath it, and my take is that if I got it right, we paused things, we didn't reveal any of the other three underneath, we done the flak, and then we delayed the raid, and then the raid came at the end of the sort of sequence and whatever. Um, so good. Uh, Stu mentioned that lead, the lead and trailing, so lead and trailing, they never attack. So I'm assuming he's noticed this by looking at the escort reaction cards and whatever, that these never make attacks, they just move into better positions. So something to keep in mind, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I suppose if you've got escort stations on them, you know that you can take a lot more chances, you know, maybe come in from the tail, delay your units knowing that they're not going to attack, they're going to move into a better position, so that to remember too. Uh, I thought there was one more, what was that? Ah, yes, yes. Um, I, I missed a fuel spend on this, I didn't notice that. Um, now, I'm guessing it's probably spoke about in the rules, so I'm not going to be able to get away by saying, look, right, how did I not know, how, how am I meant to notice that? But I'm pretty sure it'll be in the rules. If you're, if you're moving from an adjacent zone, I spent the extra fuel to go from tail low to flank low, I think it was at that time. However, there's also a, a fuel to be spent because you're in an adjacent zone. Makes makes sense, of course, doesn't it? Uh, and I would guess that's in the rule book. Um, in fact, I'm not going to go looking for it. I'm pretty sure it's going to tell you that if you're in an adjacent zone, cost you one extra fuel there. Then when you roll the dice, you've got the option to spend another fuel to up upgrade it slightly. Um, so thanks for bringing that one up as well, Tim, because I would never uh, uh, never have got that one. Um, yeah, there's two or three things being brought up there that um, I didn't, didn't know. Uh, so, good. Uh, right, so that's that's there. That's right. Right, let's get this flak dealt with them. Um, 
So it's one flak, uh, and yeah, this is where we're going to be able to tally ho, aren't we? Because we're at high altitude, which is a requirement to make contact with the tally ho, and we're in the same zone, uh, which is probably, well, it'll be same or adjacent zone, I would think, because I think we're just going to go through and do the contact. Now, I'll tell you what, I, I, although I was saying it's better to be at high altitude than here, see when you come, when you come on to the... There's not, there's not one of these, uh, that's actually not true. Yeah, they do actually. In the same zone, you can come in at high altitude, can't you? But there's nothing in here that if you're, if you're high altitude here, there's nothing that benefits you. The, the only thing being, if you, uh, 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 wise, wise, Grant, look, there's a plus one there if you're high. There's a plus one if you're high. Good, okay. That makes it a little more. Um, but also, you cannot tally ho if you're not high. Um, and I suppose... Yeah, this one as well. So, I'm basically talking rubbish here. There's quite a few, <laughs> there's quite a few reasons for being high where I'm sitting right now. So, if we happen to get lucky and roll a 10 or more, if, if we were in the sun... Or if the squadron is high, you may start. Is that if you're in the sun or? Yeah, I think so. Wait, where is that? Page 44. It tells you there. 44. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, here we go. Uh, just man. Yeah, I'm going to wait a week for this. An adjacent zone. There's the, there's the fuel. It's expenditure there. Um, contact tables. Note that the adjacent zone there is there. Note that the adjacent zone requires each section in the squadron to spend one fuel. So you would have to spend one fuel and then your adjustment if you want. So in the sun, it's a strange angle I'm coming at there, but if you roll 10 or better on the in the same zone contact table, you may spend one fuel. So it does cost us a fuel to do it. Um, to ignore the result and place the squadron's formation marker in the position that is in the sun, high altitude. To allow this, the squadron must be in the same zone as the raid, and the squadron must also be at high altitude. Okay, so it's not... What did that say? Or? Sun, or, if squadron is high, may start in any position in the sun instead. Oh, I see, I see. Hang on. Right, hi all. This is uh, just a continuation of this. Oh gosh, what is that? Patrol three, part three, I think. Whatever it says at the beginning. Right, I had to, I had to cut the part there as well because I've been away for a good bit. Uh, I think I'm about twenty three minutes in. So yeah, I wasn't sure what I was talking about. It was this. It was like rolling on this option, and I, and it was this or here. I thought sun. And then it says, or if squadron is high, may start in any position in the sun instead. And then I'm thinking, we have to be in the sun, or if it's high. Um, but that's rubbish. It's not It's not actually saying that. The or, I think, comes from this. So you can, if we roll a 10 or more, we can either be nose low, or we can spend the fuel to be flank low or nose high. And then I think the spend expenditure of the fuel also allows us to or if the squadron is high and may start in any position in the sun instead. I think that's it. I think that's it. Now did they not have the rule book open at the, that bit? And that's why I, I guess it was just the way it's got on the player aid there that yeah, in the sun, yeah, I just well, I'm sure I just went over that bit, didn't I? Because it's a that strange angle. If you're over 10 or more in the same zone, contact table, you may spend one fuel to ignore the result and place the Yeah, so you're spending the same one fuel to either go flank low or nose high, or if it's high, any position in the sun instead. Great, okay. And then there is a plus one for that being high as well. Yeah, that's not a bonus. That's not saying that if you're in the sun, you benefit from that. It means that you can go into the sun. Okay, okay. Uh, I need that cooler on it's still pretty hot right let's uh, push on because um, 
I'd like to finish this part and maybe squeeze another part in before I uh, go. Um, we're going away for the day tomorrow, so I'm not going to get a chance tomorrow. I'm off the next two days, but it looks like I'm tied up. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Well, we're still not even resolved this flak, have we? No. Right, let's, let's, do, let's do this. I got sidetracked into a few other things, didn't I? Uh, know the number, draw that many damage markers, her side up, right. And we're still not getting bombers, still not getting any escorts. We've got two damage markers here. We've actually got a destroyed. Uh, and we've got a wing that's going to... No, 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 we rolled for that. We must have rolled for that. Because any... It, I, I, well, it says any ca catastrophic results, you, you, you roll for them then when you draw them. I mean, although that's not a catastrophic one, I'm pretty sure I rolled for it anyway. Right, so let's draw, well, the flat number's only one this time. So let's draw one more to go in this and see what we get. Right, this, uh, her side up. So again, this is a fallen marker. Yeah, I think what I said was if I roll a 12, I'll put a fallen marker in there. So we're we're going to do that. And I think, I think it would be best, really. I mean... I think I've said already, as long as you do it the same way, I think it would be best leaving these die rolls on this. Because we obviously rolled this catastrophic and got it destroyed. Um, and then, I'm assuming we rolled on this and massed, and now we're on this. But you could just leave them all up there and roll for them when you've got the bombers. And then, but as long as you do it one more one way or the other and you know what you're doing so I'm going to roll for this now because that's how that's the way we've started doing it um I just think to maybe to stop the confusion now that maybe just wait until the bombers are out before you're rolling these but no I don't know right let's roll so 10 or higher and then yeah right it's a 4 so that's that's a no as well but yeah to deal with that I would just um I would have just uh, put a uh, put a fallen marker out, you know, and, and that's place, and then wh whatever random bomber we picked is going to be falling out the formation. But that's not the case. These are both just plain damage, and uh, that'll be that. Right. Back to... Let's move on with some tally-ho. So place da damage marker, no bomber tiles. Um, yeah, well, friendly fire, no, there's no area of fighters in the bomber formation area. So we're going to get card 6B, which is our tally ho now. So tally ho, if the raid marker is on the raid track, it is. And the squadron is at high altitude, it is. And it's there, you can see that little blue block underneath it. So yes, um... You may spend one fuel to immediately perform contact. If so, go to car 10A contact. If you do not or can't, well... And then this isn't this isn't going to apply because it's not that way around. So I'm going to spend one fuel. Now... Right, this is just yellow and blue. And in fact, in fact, you know what? Red and green are going to come off anyway. Because when we make contact, these are all going to be RTV'd. Well, I'm not going to remove the fuel cubes just yet, but it's just yellow and blue that's... I mean, I think I'm doing this right, because it's it's only them that are involved now. They're the only two sections that are trying to contact. You know, so this basically counts for yellow and blue. I think that's fine. I think we understand that. And we've got these these two fighters over there, one from red section, one from green section that are lost contact. But when we make contact, they're then going to return to base. That's they're forced to return to base. So okay, so I've spent the fuel, and then we're going to uh, go to card ten A. So you may spend one fuel majority to perform contact. And go to card ten A. Right. Okay. So ten A. That was good. Just flip that over like that. The raid marker's not yet on the raid track, skip the step. Well, as the raid marker's on the raid track, you may perform contact if squadron is in the same or adjacent zone to the raid marker. Contact is on that row of die on one of the contact tables to determine the squadron's starting position on the interception map. To 
we use a sun option on a roll 10 pass IF squadron must spend one fuel. Right. Um, okay, so I'll just put the cards to the side and well this chart is on here. But we're just looking at that so anyway. So we are in the same zone, as we can see. Um, so we're looking at this chart. Now we are at high altitude. There's no clouds. So that minus one doesn't apply, but we are at high altitude, so we're getting a plus one to this die roll. And ideally, we're looking, well, the higher the better, but we're looking for a 10. But remember, we are getting a plus one. So here we go. Oh, nine. But I'll tell you what, the plus one takes it to 10. Woohoo! that's nice. This could be good. I mean, we've only got two, two sections left that are going to be able to do this, but that's pretty, pretty good stuff. I can see yourself losing these things going most contact quite a bit. I think, I think that very first patrol, we must have got quite lucky with things, I think, to still have everybody involved. Okay, so we we'll rolled a 9 plus 1, 10. So we're 10 or more. So we're... Um, yeah, no, we've spent the fuel to do this. And now we've got this option. We can stay... We can come in at nose low. But I don't think we're going to. I think we're going to spend another fuel to either go flank low or nose high. However, or if squadron is high, may start in any position in the sun instead. Um, so, I must, yeah, well, if you're in the sun, you've got to be high altitude. So we, we stay at high altitude. Uh, and each one of these options require just one fuel spent. So flank low, nose high, or any position in the sun is going to cost me one fuel. So I'm pretty sure, we're, well, in fact, let's not muck about. We're going to spend that fuel. So it's just blue and yellow. Well, like I say, I'm pretty sure red and green are just going to go away shortly anyway. Blue and yellow, that's right. Um, so where is the sun? That's in the tail. The problem is, and this is what um, Stu pointed out, although we said it was the sun that avoided you um, seeing where the escorts are, it's not. It's not quite, is it? It's the. It's been. It's clear. It's a clear weather rather than the haze, um, or obviously cloud, clouds wouldn't have the sun, but um, at least I don't think you can have clouds and the sun, can you? Don't think so. Um, but yeah, the weather is not clear, so we've not got the stage. And this is where, if we if we rewind back to my die roll that I'd, that I done, and I rolled a two, and I think we had high station and was it the lead station or the head station? I can't remember what the two roll was. Well, I could probably tell you just now. Uh, quickly glancing at this, the two roll was high. Heavy, heavy and high, heavy 109s and high, and 110s and low. So, you can see now that if I wanted to place this, then if I wanted to go back to that die roll and say they're going to be in high and low, then I know where they're going to be. So I'm clearly going to avoid them. So that's why we do need to create a new die roll, I think. Because, um, to be honest, this is where the sun is, so I would be in the same position as them, wouldn't I? If I'm going to take this on, and I think I am, I'm on it. Uh, now, if we come in from the tail in the first round, but, you know, as we're coming in, does the, do you get the penalties? I think you do get the round one penalty, don't you? Uh, mind you, we're at high altitude. <gasps> so the penalty... Where are the penalties? Oh, there's a little box with it on it, and uh, I don't know what that is. Mm. Uh, I remember seeing it in the room. I'll see it when I'm flicking through the pages here, and I hope to just see it. <laughs> I could probably do this in a better way, I think. You could certainly pause the camera, Grant. Right, there it is, round one penalty. It's on page 21. So, yeah, if we are in the tail, we 
tail. If the return fire result is a hit, flip the marker over, it becomes a hit marker, and then draw a second hit marker, compare the hit numbers, keep the highest number, put the other back in the cart. Bombers were quite with rear facing guns. White bomber exception. The tail penalty applies only when the approach is tail high. Stukas did not have ventral guns. So, the actual fact, if it's medium bombers we get, it doesn't matter if we're high or low in the tail, that penalty is going to apply. And if it was Stukas, white bombers, then it applies at tail high. Well, my intention was to come in at high. So. <sighs> The thing is, you're getting the bonus of the sun. But they penalties. Uh, but I don't come in. I don't come in delayed, though, do I? No. It's only if I want. Well, then again, you can stay on the. You can stay on the tail as well, with them. But that penalty is. That penalty is a bit rough. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what, I need to experience some of these things, so I think I'm going to do this. Uh, and I want to say, if we if we get a decent enough die rolls, they're not another option, you don't need to use the two two dice and put them together. There's another option, avoid avoid a hat in the first round. Is it avoid the hat? Cancel a hat or something? Right, we'll come at that anyway. Right, so I am going to pay one more fuel. Did I pay it? I think I did, did. Ah, damn. I feel like I moved them cubes twice. I'm pretty sure I did, didn't I? Because I, I moved them into there at first, and then that was, that was to make the contact. And then I says, right, well, I'm definitely going to do one of these things, and I moved them again. Right, I'm pretty sure I've, I've paid the fuel. If we look back on that and see that I haven't, then I'll need to be careful though, because we're starting to get a little close. Um, I think I did though. So I'm going to go for the, because we rolled in this, I'm going to go for the squadron is high, so it may start in any position in the sun instead. So we're going to start in the sun tail high. Oh, this is... Is this wise? <laughs> well, we've got... Oh, of course, that destroyed marker's not going to count for us, is it? Well, it's going to reduce the amount of... Because that got shot down by flak, so... Yeah. Right, I can get rid of that now. And... Contact to use some option. Yeah. Move your squadron. Right, and then also... So we've moved the squadron... Uh, that position indicating the contact table and go to card 12. Ah, of course, 11 is the vector one. Right. Uh, but also, all lost contact fires must immediately return to base. Right, let's deal with that first. Um, so we've got these two guys over there. We can get rid of the low ammo there. The green and the red. Um, so red is going there as well. And then green leader is going to go in there. Now... The other ones, so the other ones are up in their fate boxes, aren't they? There's the last one in red, there's green and green. So I, I can now take their two cube, their fuel cubes away, because there's nothing left. Um, and we'll just keep an eye on this, just in case I didn't spend that fuel. I'm pretty sure I did, though. So it's possible it's in this box. But <clears throat> right, and then also, <coughs> place escort stations on the map. So it doesn't matter what the... What the visibility is now, we're placing them, and then we're placing the bomber tiles as well. You can see, but the furthest of visibility is clouds. Well, it's not clouds. So we're going to place escort station markers, and then we're going to place the bomber tiles. Right. So I'm going to re-roll this because, yeah, I think it's... I, I had to do, I had to really re-roll re it. I don't think there was a way... Of, Making that fair. I know it was a bad roll, but oh, I'm kind of hoping the roll two again. But I'm saying that <laughs> where we are, maybe not. Right. So the higher the better for us. Um, here we go. <laughs> right. I did not stage that at all. But there you go. Oh dear. Uh, well, that's bad. So the two is 
the same die rows I play there were, yeah, that's just karma, isn't it? That's <laughs> um, so we've got heavy 109s in the high station and normal 110s in the low. Um, and the high one, yeah, that, that's bad. So heavy 109s in the high, which is where we are as well, and they're getting the sun, and it's light 110s in the low station. So they're right round about us there. Um, and this is, I think, what Stu was saying. If you've not got the visibility, well, you can see. I think, I, I think I'm right in saying it's more about the visibility rather than the sun, but anyway, his point is that that you don't know where they are, so it's kind of bad. Right, so we're going to sort the bombers out now as well. So, um, yeah, we need to see what we get. So, so one to six is two cars, and then so on. Uh, let's see what we get. There's a two again. Right, well, it is two cars. So, oh, and then we need the we need the actual formation then. So one to five, etc. So it's one of these three. Um, I might even change that deck over as well because I had the medium bomber deck out. Uh, that's a six. So it's going to be this. I think that's the one we had the very first time as well. So it's this formation of Stukas. Alright, so there's our, it was that formation there. So just checking that that's right. That's fine. Should maybe show a little more space, but. As long as we can see where they're attached and whatever. Yeah, you start moving them about and you start making a mess of things. So I had it all nicely set. Why are you touching it again? <laughs> um, okay. Right, that, that's definitely that, isn't it? One, two, three, that's another one. Yeah. yeah, okay, and then thinking back to this, where I thought this was the best one to get rid of first, I now realise that probably want to go for that one first so that then all these five are still attached, then go for that one. So we only need to do that one and that one, and then we've got the six points. So, yeah. I think I've made, I've made a blunder, I think, every time I've done this, but, you know, and even though I say it's quite a bit of a puzzle, it's probably not that difficult a puzzle, really, is it? <laughs> I seem to have felt like I've made it harder than it needs to. Right, so that's the bombers, right? I'm going to reshuffle, because we we. Brought the medium bomber deck out already, and that was. Oh, we had to randomize. Was that for. That was for the straggler, wasn't it? I think. Anyway, so. Uh, just There was only one cartoon out of that medium deck, so shuffle that a little bit. The white deck, I've already had these shuffled. I'll just give them another wee couple of shuffles over and cut the deck, and then. Uh, That'll be that. Right, so we've got white white bomber deck for the stickers. Okay, and then we move on to card 12. Um, what did I say I had in there? 23 minutes. So I was just, just thinking this is possibly a good place to stop. Um, right, so our next, our next card is the orders. Yeah, could I not have moved that along a little bit? It's not really that important, Grant. It was just the way we put the card in here. Um, so that's where we move on to, and now we're going to give our orders. Um, we've got six fighters, just two sections. Um, oh, actually, hold on, hold on. Should, this, this should now be away, shouldn't it? We've done all this, yeah? We did move on to contact, I think that's what threw me by that, but we've done all that. Oh, we've got to sort out our damage and all that, though, for the bombers. Uh, but that is done, and there there we go, there's that There's that 11 revealed. <laughs> um, I, I have to say, it, it feels like a little bit of a, not the best positioning for it. I mean, you can clearly see it when the vector markers are moved. You think about that last patrol I had, though, I didn't, reveal, I didn't remove all the vector markers because of the situation we had. So I don't know if that means that that number doesn't count then for things, because I'm pretty sure we we considered the escort exit, but that was covered up by a tile still. 
So, um, I don't know. Um, it is quite clear when you see it there. When, it, when it's revealed, it's maybe only available when it's revealed. Uh, anyway, let's uh, push on. So, yeah, I need to resolve these. So we've got a destroyed... We'll do the destroyed marker first then. And, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I'm going to do it like that to pick the tile where there's going to be a destroyed uh, 12. So it's the last tile on bottom right there. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. To find out which bomber it is. It's 11, so it's the one on the right. So this is destroyed. Right, and then I'm pretty sure if I look at it, it means that now... We don't. We now want to randomise for the first damage. Is going to be the twelve wing, but I don't want to count this tile. I think. Uh, I need to look up flat. If I'm flat, page fifty-two. Uh, give me a second. Right, so you may place them randomly in bombers. One marker per tile. So in the word, yeah. So one marker per tile. We don't need to really read any more there. So this has got a marker, we've got two more to dish out, so... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I'll reroll 11 or 12. This is for the wing damage. 2, so that's the first one, again 1 to 4, etc. Uh, 3, so it's the bomber on the right. Uh, sorry, the left. Uh, and then... And remember, we've already rolled to see if these uh, were fallen or not. So now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? And then 1 to 4 on whichever one it is. We've got 2, so it's this one here. Again, 1 to 4 on the left, etc. 3, so it is the guy on the left. And that's a fuselage damage. Okay, and remember, the, the Stukas need 3 of any. One cockpit, as usual, uh, but only one engine hit uh, to destroy them. And this one's destroyed, and again, I'll put a little green cube on that, because that was destroyed with flak, so we're not getting a victory point for that, sadly. Um, okay, that's that. Dealt with... Yeah, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to just stop this part here. Um... Because the next bit, we're just gonna we're just gonna get that bombers order again. And these, uh, yeah, well, actually, I need to look. Nah. Uh, yeah, I think the fact where these escort stations are, I don't think we we're coming in from the tail, but yeah, we're gonna suffer that penalty. Yeah, this might might not have been a great idea. Uh, Right, yeah, I think I will. I'm going to just stop and start again, though, but it's just to cut the video. Um, I know I'm probably not even at 50 minutes there, but that's fine, that's fine. And then I'll create, uh, get one more part in and probably have to call it a night, unless I can sneak back for a little bit, but I think we are getting up reasonably early tomorrow, So, and I was up early, early this morning, so... Uh, it's probably unlikely I'll get back from that. But. Right, so I'll be back with the next part um, shortly. Cheers.